happen, but I'm Mike Wilbon. Tony, scientists say the sun used to have rings like Saturn. Tony Kornheiser, I hope it never smelled like Uranus. That's funny. I like that. Uh, That's funny. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, you trash uh, all the Uranus uh, jokes, uh, but it's funny. Uh, you can't go wrong with a joke like that. Yeah. Uh, no, it's a good uh, joke. Uh, uh, so Trust funny. Me. I'm the funny one. I'm supposed to know this. Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Niners need a win. The Knicks beat the Celtics at the buzzer, and Kawhi Leonard could return this season. But we begin today with the news that Byron Leftwich, currently the offensive coordinator in Tampa Bay, will interview for the vacant coaching job in Jacksonville. Leftwich knows Jacksonville. He played four seasons for the Jaguars after being the third overall pick in the 2003 draft. Leftwich's record as a starter there was 24-20. and 20. He was 0-1 in the playoffs. Well, but I know you love Leftwich. Would you advise him to take this job if offered? Absolutely yes, Tony. I love the story because I've known Byron Leftwich since he was, I don't know, 12 or 13 years old. I think it was seventh grade. And as a writer for the Washington Post, and I went to speak to his, his, his class at school in Metropolitan D.C., and he came up to me after class and said, you know, Mr. Wilbon, you'll be writing about me one day. And I said, writing about you doing what? He said, playing, playing quarterback, playing football. How'd that go for him? That was pretty good, wasn't it? He was pretty perceptive. Good. He pretty knew good. himself. He wound up playing in the NFL, and it was a joy to write about him as a professional quarterback. And now I want to write about him as a professional coach. Is the, is the Jaguars' job the ideal job? No. But ask Eric Bieniemy if he'd take a job if offered, if somebody gave him a serious interview and followed up by hiring him. And the answer is yes, yeah. because while there are more quarter, uh, head coaches uh, among African Americans and it's a situation that is better than it was 30 years ago when Tony Dungy had to wait years more than a decade before somebody had the common sense and guts to hire him? Yes, it's better. Is it where it should be? No. And so this is not an ideal job, but Byron Leftwich knows that situation. You mentioned his, his record there. He led them to the playoffs at least once. So, yes, I would advise him if we were sitting around talking, Byron, yeah. it's not a great job, but it's a job. You can do this. It's interesting. I have a legal pad, and I write things down, and I separate things into columns. And if I were advising Byron Leftwich, what I would say to him is the only thing I can tell you about taking this job is there are only 32 of them in the whole world. And you might not get another chance. So in that sense, you take a job. And other than that, Mike, everything on the legal pad goes the other way. It yeah. goes the other way. The owner of that team, Shad Khan, has not demonstrated he knows anything about football whatsoever. He's owned the team for 10 years. In that period of time, Mike, their record is 41 and 119. He is now working on hiring his fifth full-time coach. The others have been Mike Malarkey, Gus Bradley, Doug Marone, and Urban Meyer, who was uniquely not suited to the NFL and was tone deaf to it. And I don't think any of those people are going to get another head coaching job in the NFL. Only once in those years, Mike, has Jacksonville won more than six games. I think Leftwich would be stepping into a sinkhole. I think it's a terrible franchise in an outpost, but if he wants to take it, I'll say this about him as a coordinator. Tampa Bay in the last three years has been third, third, and second in offense in the whole league. And you could say, well, Tom Brady's a lot of that, and he is. But he did it with Jameis Winston as well. That's to right. me, if you take this job, Mike, if you can win five or six for a couple of years and somebody else likes you, you take that job. Yeah. Because the, the people are going to go to the game this week wearing clown suits. Clown yeah. suits because they don't like Yet. the owner. They're going to have his handlebar Yet. mustache and K-H-L-O-W-N clown. Yeah. If you were sitting with Byron Leftwich over drinks right now in the place we all have lived in greater Washington, and he said, Tony, uh, you know, I got this opportunity. You know the league. You know the context of the league. Should I take yeah. this job? You would say what to him? I would say take it with your eyes open and realize that it is a terrible franchise at the moment, know, yeah. and I he don't know that it gets better. These people want to fire the GM as well. You yeah. know, but if you bet on yourself, yeah. you take it. That's all he's got to bet on. Again, ask Eric Bieniemy how he would answer that question. Let's move to one of the few games that actually matters this weekend. The Niners will make the playoffs by beating the Rams, something San Francisco has done five straight times. Five. For their part, the Rams are already in and have been rolling. So, Tony, how important is it for your Super Bowl darlings to yeah. win this game, the season finale? Well, they can't get the number one seed. It doesn't matter. They can't get it. The best they can get is the number two seed and a home game. If they lose and Arizona beats Seattle, Arizona 
gets the championship of the division. If I'm Arizona, I don't want that. I want to open on the road in Dallas because Dallas isn't a great team and my road record is 8-1. and one. But perhaps I'm getting too much into the weeds here. The Rams, look, the Rams should want to win this game. The Rams should try to win this game. They would get a home game against either New Orleans or San Francisco. And I don't want to go into nuance here. The problem is San Francisco. As you said, they've lost five straight to San Francisco. Jimmy Garoppolo owns them. He's 5-0 and against them. Now, Garoppolo's injured and may not play. So maybe they can beat Trey Lance. But this is I, they should want to win this game, yes. Yeah, they should want to win the game. They should. In San Francisco, of course, you'll want it more. Because they need to win to get in the playoffs. I mean, San Francisco's got the incentive, the real incentive, uh, incentive here. And so I, I'm not going to say that the Rams are lacking in that. Because, Tony, you don't want to be, as we know from Aaron Rodgers and the team he owns, where I grew up, you don't want another guy to own you. You don't want another team to own you. Yeah. Because psychologically, right. that spreads through locker rooms. We know that. We talk to players all the time who said, you know what, we're not having a very good season, but we know we can beat them. You don't want that, particularly in your division. So the Rams should try to win this game. They should want to win this game because they're going to get met with everything San Francisco you know, has, whether it's Jimmy Garoppolo or not. So I like the Rams to win this game. The Rams are going into the playoffs in an ideal circumstance. They've won five in a row. They got Cooper Cup. They got Odell Beckham Jr. They got Von Miller. They got Aaron Donald. They may get Cam Akers back for this particular game. If Matthew Stafford can stop throwing it to the other Ooh, team, if. they look like a good team. But I will say this to you, Mike. If they lose this game, it feels like they would be derailed. I think from a confidence standpoint, winning this game is extremely important. Yeah, I'd say it's important. I don't know about extremely because we've seen this. We saw, we saw Tampa Bay give it up, just roll over and die against a division opponent, New Orleans, last year, late in the season and, and twice the during the season. You know, I, and, so, beat and beat them in the playoffs. Yep. So I, I don't yep. know. But, Tony, you mentioned all those things they have, and you got to Matthew Stafford last. Because Matthew Stafford hasn't really proven anything in the playoffs. So, I mean, this is a That's big right. thing for him, too, in his confidence. Yes. The Celtics blew a 25-point lead last night. They lost to the Knicks. It's the fourth time this season the Celtics have blown leads of at least 19 points. Their first-year coach, Ime Udoka, says his team has, quote, a lack of mental toughness, unquote. Meanwhile, on the other side, Julius Randle pulled a Javi Baez. He gave Knicks fans the literal thumbs down. When asked what message he was Ooh. trying to say, send, Ooh. Randall told the fans who'd been booing him to, quote, shut the bleep up, only he didn't use bleep. <laughs> yeah. Wilbon, do you come to praise the Knicks or bury the Celtics? I come to praise Julius Randall. Just like I praised Javi Baez when he did it in a different part of town. He did it in Queens. And he said, let That's me right. give you a finger. I'll give you one they can show on TV, but it has the same meaning. I come to praise Julius Randle. Julius Randle was the most improved player in the league last year. I think he was fifth on my MVP ballot. They want to boo him. Let me give you some digits. All right? Good. I love going to the Garden. You know this. You've been with me. You know how much I love going there. Good. I am so happy this made me happy last night, even as I thought of you and Stephen A. and Knicks guys all your lives. I thought of you guys and how proud you must be of beating the Celtics. I know that meant something to you in your youth. But this, I come to praise them. And I would the Celtics, man, they got to make a move or moves or tear it up. The Celtics are not working. And so they got a whole different landscape in front of them. But Julius Randle, standing ovation. Yeah. Um, if you remember, Javi Baez and Frankie Lindor apologized to the fans afterwards because well, the they owner stepped have. in and said to do it. And the owner of the Knicks is not going to step in and do anything. He's just not. No, the Knicks he's are, not. No, I, he's I not. didn't want to talk about the Knicks. I want to talk about the Celtics. The Celtics in the last couple of seasons have begun to dissolve. Yeah. They had been to the conference finals three out of four years. Last year, they were at 500. This year, let me get the numbers exact. Ooh, they're 18 and Under. 21. And yeah. they're in 11th place at the moment. Udoka calling him out doesn't seem to mean much, really. Um, they are so terrible before. in the fourth yeah. quarter, Mike. In the mm -hmm. fourth quarter, they are 26th in offensive efficiency and 25th in defensive efficiency, and there's only 30 teams. And my guess is coaching may have something to do with that as well as they collapse all the time. But I think their biggest problem, Mike, is they don't have a point guard like, say, Chris Paul, who Agreed. can take over the game late 
and prevent them from losing. Agreed. They had Kyrie Irving, and he left. They brought in Kemba Walker, and he failed. And I don't think that Tatum or Smart is that guy. They need that guy, Mike. They need somebody Tony. to say late in the game, we're going to win. They don't Tony, have it. You're 100% right. But the thing is, Tone, I mean, Tatum and Brown don't seem to fit. I know they're each tremendous talents, and at times they are great. And nobody wants to say out loud, well, I don't know if you would. Do you want to trade Tatum? But, Tony, they just take turns. They don't fit as a team, and they don't have that guy to sort of get them together. They don't. Marcus Smart spoke they to don't. this. He spoke directly to it. And I ain't no, going to put it on the coach because this happened last year, too. But he's not the guy necessarily yeah. either. He should be moved over a spot on that floor. But Tony, the Celtics, wow. They've just, they're not what we thought they would be. Neither are the Knicks, but... Let's either. take a break. Coming up with Kawhi Leonard's potential return, shake up the battle for the Western Conference. And what's the word for what Markeith Morris called Nikolai Jokic? Maybe I can let it's somebody in New York borrow problem. one of my fingers. They can borrow one of mine. It's a point guard problem. The yeah, Celtics yeah, yeah. have had yeah, great, yeah, yeah. dependable point guards. They don't have one now. No, they don't. Time to get it on with Lexicon and what's the word. Let's get the first one from the producer over the loudspeaker. Kawhi Leonard's return would have a blank impact on the Western Conference race. So my word is developing, Mike, because I don't want to get out over my skis on this. There's a report in Yahoo that Kawhi Leonard can come back from a torn ACL. There's a strong possibility he would come back this year. That's a very serious injury. You don't know when he's going to come back. Is it April? Is it May? Is it June? We don't know that. We don't know how good he's going to be. We don't know what his durability will be. Kawhi Leonard essentially invented load management. You know, I think the Clippers need to not worry about that and worry about where they are in the standings. Mike, they're 19 and 20, and they're in eighth place. they got to make the playoffs. Kawhi Leonard's not there. Paul George isn't there. He's been out for about a month. If they come back, does it make them better? Sure, it makes them better. Does it make them better than Utah or Golden State or Phoenix or even Memphis? I don't know that. This is speculation. This is projection. So it's a developing story. Projection, Holmes. Tony, it's an ain't happening situation. His return would have ain't happening impact on the playoff race. Kawhi Leonard had surgery to tear to repair that torn ligament in July. That means we're only six months out now. There have been some great comebacks and people coming back in eight and nine months. Tony, that ain't happening. Why would he do that? And even if he does, we're talking April. The playoffs begin in April. So this is not a playoffs begin in a bubble. It's not a playoffs begin in July. No, April. So, no, there's not enough okay. time. Ain't happening. Next. Markeith Morris is blank for referring to Nikola Jokic as a 300-pound sloppy fat boy on Twitter. Weirdly justified. Okay, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of the Morris brothers, and I never have been. But I found out today that play that we talked about months ago on November 8th, where Jokic slammed Morris down after Morris banged him at midcourt with a hard foul. Morris hasn't played since then, Mike. That's 30 games. He hasn't played. He says he has whiplash. Better call Saul. Better call 1-800-WHIPLASH. This is unbelievable to me. Jokic missed one game on a suspension, and Morris has missed 30. If this was the NHL, Jokic would still be out. So if he wants to call him that or something far worse, I understand that. Tony, Morris is venge-seeking for what he calls Jokic. I'm with what he called Jokic. I mean, he's got beef. He's got legitimate beef with him. Now, let me just say this. I do know the Morris brothers a little bit, and here's what I'm not about to do is question their physical toughness. Like there are people doing, saying, oh, he's faking. No, the, the Morris brothers don't fake. You cannot like them if you want, but toughness, uh, there's no toughness issue with Marcus or Markeith. So he's got no, beef. No, no toughness issue. And he's, no. he's angry still and calling him what he's calling him. So it, it's vengeance-seeking, and we understand this when guys have beef with each other. That's right. That's it. Let's take one last break still to come. What would J.J. Watt's return do for the Arizona Cardinals? And Tony wants to know whether the Bulls are going to win their ninth straight tonight. So, I, you know, I think we should have a little Bulls corner. I had no idea he had missed every game since then. Yeah. I, yeah. I had no idea. 
Happy time, people. Happy 25th birthday, Lamar Jackson. Jackson is a remarkably decorated young quarterback. He won the Heisman at Louisville, and he was already MVP of the NFL at Baltimore. His record as a starter for the Ravens going into this season was 30-7, and seven, but this season has been rocky. He has 16 touchdowns and 13 interceptions, a quarterback rating of only 87, which puts him just below Jalen Hurts and just above Taylor Heineken. Jackson has run for 767 yards, but scored only two touchdowns. More importantly, he has missed the last three games with an ankle injury. This is the big fear about Jackson, that he won't be durable enough to withstand the pounding he takes on the field. Jackson will miss Sunday's game as well against Pittsburgh. The Ravens have a mathematical chance at the playoffs if they beat the Steelers, but they also need the Raiders to beat the Chargers, not Ty. They need the Patriots to beat Miami and the Jaguars to beat Indianapolis, and it seems like a long shot. Tony, I went to a game to see Lamar Jackson almost specifically play in Chicago against the Bears. I think it was November 21. And he missed that game, which was sort of a surprise. And he's been no factor since. And now we're talking six weeks. So, I mean, he's a yeah. big star. And that team, an effective player, former MVP, the Ravens need him. Happy anniversary, Trevor Lawrence. On this day three years ago as a true freshman, Lawrence threw for 347 yards and three touchdowns on his way to being named MVP of the national championship game as Clemson dismantled Alabama. Right now, that looks like the highlight of his career. Lawrence made the final the next year, but lost to Joe Burrow. He made the playoffs again last year, but lost to Justin Fields. Lawrence entered the NFL draft touted as a generational talent, but his year in Jacksonville has been a nightmare. The Jaguars are two and 14. They've already fired their coach. Lawrence has just 10 touchdown passes and 17 interceptions. Now, he had 17 interceptions at Clemson also, but over three years. And he had 90 touchdown passes. In Jacksonville, Lawrence is completing only 59% of his passes. And his 69.6 .6 quarterback rating is the worst in the league. Plus, it's gotten worse as it goes. Lawrence has two touchdowns and eight picks in his last six games. It is so odd to ask, can his career be saved? Saved? Let's start it first. If you swap Lawrence or Justin Fields with the Alabama kid in New England playing for Bill Belichick, you'll get the opposite results. This position, particularly early on, is about coaching. And those two guys, Fields and Lawrence, they haven't had any yet. So let's start their careers. I don't want to question the end of them. Happy trails to Nikita Kucherov's absence due to injury. The Tampa Bay winger who missed the last 32 games with an undisclosed lower body injury that required surgery returned last night as if he'd never been gone. Ooh. Kucherov had two wonderful assists. The first one as accurate a pass as Tom Brady has ever thrown. As Tampa Bay beat Calgary 4-1 to one to become the NHL's first team to 50 points for the fourth time in the last five years. Do I think Kucherov played well? Lightning coach John Cooper asked rhetorically. I do. Do I think he has better than that? I do. Do I think he's an elite talent? I do. Kucherov had previously missed all of last year's regular season with hip surgery, but came back in the playoffs with a league-best 32 points as Tampa Bay won its second straight Stanley Cup. The league needs him back, and I'm sure is glad he's back. Tony, I'm going to wish a melancholy trails to the great one and only Sidney Poitier, who was sort of the, the Jackie Robinson to a lot of us of the movie industry in terms of African-American participation. Some of his movies, Tony, real quickly, Lilies of the Field, for which he won an Academy Award, Patch of Blue, Heat of the Night, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner to Serve with Love, Raising in the Sun, No Way Out. And that was before he got to some contemporary stuff like Uptown Saturday Night and Buck and the Preacher. My family, Tone, in my house, we dressed up. We put on a jacket and tie, my father and my brother and I, and we went to the movies to see Sidney Poitier. And he passed away at 94 years old. I, I can't even imagine my life without enjoying those moments when his movies would come out and he was such a big star in them. They get observed officially one time, the Academy Award for Lilies of the Field. He is a great actor, was a great actor. In the Heat of the Night is one of the greatest movies ever made. And he it dominates is. the movie. I mean, it it, it's, it's a spectacular movie, and that is a very, very good long life. Great actor, Sidney Poitier. Let's go Absolutely. to the big finish. Let's do it. The Cardinals designated J.J. Watt to return from injured reserve. Is that significant? Tony, it's significant that he's coming back after a torn bicep, labrum, and rotator cuff in just October. You put him on the field, 
It really helps the Cardinals in all ways. Sue Bird announced she'll return to the Seattle Storm for another season. Your thoughts? She's 41 years old. She's got a million titles in that league. She's got a million gold medals. She's a Long Island girl. Makes 